Okay, in the last video, I was perhaps confusing you a bit with the notation here, but we're going to, this is the very start, and it's important to uh, just understand the idea behind an integral. So the idea behind an integral is to do the opposite of a derivative. So sometimes that's called an antiderivative. And those are useful for finding areas under a curve, so something like this. Our goal is going to be to eventually be able to solve things like this. So I showed you a bit about the notation. So we saw that we write this integral symbol like this. And then I tried to explain a bit about an antiderivative, but I think this de uh, definition is a bit circular. It's sort of, it doesn't, I don't find it that helpful. So what I think will be more helpful um, is to just show you with an example. So let's say we have an example like this. So we're given dy dx is x squared. And the idea is that we want to find an equation for y. So that's, that's our goal. We want to find out, you know, if we have some equation for y, then if we take its derivative, we should get x squared. That's the idea. Okay, so we need to find what we call an antiderivative. That's really what we're trying to do here. We're trying to find the antiderivative. So what do I mean by that? I mean that we need to find an equation whose, uh, whose derivative is x squared. See, I think this makes more sense when you see it in an example here. So see, we're only given dy dx. In other words, we're given that the derivative is x squared. And our goal is to find out what's the original function. Well, I mean, that, that's the idea here. We want to find an equation whose derivative is x squared. So there's some function that exists where you take its derivative and you get x squared when you're done. So that's what I mean by an antiderivative. I think that should make more sense now. So we need something whose derivative is this. So we could try just guessing. And actually, I'll just show you how we can do that. So we could try simply guessing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just guess some values or guess some things and I'll just try to take its derivative because obviously if I guess right I can guess whatever I want take its derivative and I better get x squared if I did it right then then I'm right so let's let's try an example here so maybe I'll try I'll try a first guess here I'll try guessing um, I don't know something linear let's say y equals 2x that's not a bad guess so let's see if that works well if I try to take dy dx What's the derivative of this thing? It's just two. Is that equal to x squared? Nope. So right here, so I'm gonna say this, so that didn't work, so nope. Uh, you know, not, not x squared. You know, the idea is that we want the derivative here. We want this thing right here to be x squared. And it's not, so that's clearly wrong. Maybe I could guess something else. Maybe I could guess that it's um, y equals uh, well, I tried going one power less. Maybe I'll go one power more. So x cubed. Let's try that. So I'm going to do dy dx. So I'm just showing you how you can methodically just sort of guess things and see if you can get the answer. I'm just going to pretty this up a bit. dy dx. So if I want to try to do this, well, let's see. What's the derivative of x cubed? Well, the 3 comes in front, so it becomes 3 times x squared. Is 3x squared equal to x squared? Remember, that's our goal. Our goal is to find some function whose derivative is x squared. Well, I would say, nope, but we're close. Can you see that, that we're actually, we're pretty close to what we needed. We wanted an x squared, and we got 3x squared. So a lot of people think, ah, if only we didn't have the three. Well, how could we get rid of that three? Well, we could make it like this, we could say, Check this out, this is actually a bit clever, watch this. If I just divide by three to begin with, what does that make my derivative? See, by dividing by three, it's gonna get rid of this three. So let's try it out. So the three comes in front here. So if I do the derivative, it's three times x squared, but we still have the divided by three. And look, they cancel each other out. So that works, you know, so, hooray, it works. So this, what this means then is that well, we could almost conclude, we're gonna conclude sort of incorrectly at the moment. I just want you to bear with me here because I'm gonna show you something here. So it works. So because it works, we could say therefore, y equals x cubed over three. That should work. 
because this is the antiderivative of x squared. This is what we've really done. We found the antiderivative of x squared. We found it was x cubed over 3. So you might think, great, I'm done. But what I want to show you is this. Okay, so uh, remember the goal was we started off with dy dx equaled x squared, and we found that the antiderivative is, uh, what was it? It was x cubed over 3. So what I want to tell you is this, but, and this is a very big but, <laughs> that sounds actually kind of silly, but, okay, a very big but, um, you could have also said, because it turns out there's other antiderivatives possible. So I just want to show you this. What if I had something like this? What if um, I use this uh, y equals x cubed over 3 plus 2, let's just say. What's the, what's the derivative of that? Well, that would be dy dx would be, I'm just trying to not have this right here, it looks so bad. There we go. So dy dx would be, let's see, 3x squared over 3, those would cancel out, and this constant would go poof, it would disappear. So that would still give you this. Do you see how that one right there, that one also works? What if I had this, y equals x cubed over 3 plus 2 pi even? Well, the derivative of that, dy dx, is still 3x squared over 3, which those cancel out, and then this goes poof. So do you notice this also works? So there's a problem here. It turns out, no matter what I have here for the antiderivative, I'm missing something. The thing that I'm missing is that I could add to it any constant. You know, it could be 2, it could be 2 pi, it could be 3, it could be 4, it could be 8, it could be negative 50,000. If I add or subtract some number here that doesn't have any x's in it, taking its derivative will make it disappear and it'll still give me my sort of correct answer. So what this tells me then is this. So the real antiderivative of x squared is actually a little bit more complicated. You have to just be careful. It's this. It's x cubed over 3, like we just thought. That's because that's a function whose derivative is this, except you have to add some sort of generic constant. So we could say this, that this right here, where c is some sort of constant. So this could be anything, right? This constant could be 2 pi, it could be 2, it could be negative 5,000, it could be whatever you want, as long as it's some value, just a constant number. And taking its derivative will make that thing go poof, disappear, and then uh, this thing's derivative will still work. So that's why the idea of an antiderivative is just this. Okay, so to take an antiderivative, you find an equation whose derivative is what you're looking for. So for example, we started with dy dx equal x squared. We were trying to find an equation for y. By the way, we have it now. The equation then is this, y equals x cubed over 3 plus any constant. That's our sort of final answer here. And that's because we found some equation whose derivative is this. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just trying to write with a magic pen here and try to, oh, maybe I'll do this creative pen. That's what I want. There we go. So this is really our equation right here. We were trying to find an equation. Well, here it is. That is the answer to this question here. So what's the equation for y? y is x cubed over 3 plus any constant, because you could add anything you wanted to it, and it would still work. That would be some function whose derivative is x squared. So I've just basically shown you how we work with integrals. So the idea then is that we need some sort of thing that has a constant here. Okay, so that's the idea behind this. We have to have something that has some constant term. So maybe I'll just add an extra thing. So, uh, whoops, I shouldn't probably write with this uh, silly pen now. So I'll try to formalize it a bit. So we could say, Turns out that an antiderivative is actually using this integral notation. So we could actually rewrite it like this. We could have said our goal was to take the 
antiderivative of x squared. That was our goal, right? We wanted to find some function whose derivative is x squared. So what we would do then, we would start with this, we'd say, well, the integral of x squared dx is just x cubed over 3 plus the constant. You see, you needed that constant term. You always need that. And this is the idea behind what we call an indefinite integral. So this is something that's going to be really important. I'm going to talk about why that is in a second. So indefinite integral. So what is that? It's an integral without bounds. Now what I mean by that is that, uh, see, it's this would be like taking the area under this curve. You'd start with this, but the problem is you don't know where to start and where to finish with your area under a curve. So what we do is when we have an integral without numbers on the bottom or the top, so this is like this, an indefinite integral is an integral without bounds. In other words, there's no, no start or end. In other words, we're not told this. If ever we do that, how do we do it? We find the antiderivative and we add a constant. So what do we do here? We take the antiderivative. So see the antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over three. And that's because x cubed over three is something that if you take its derivative, it gives you x squared. So that's really what we've done. So you take the antiderivative and you add, this is really important though, add c. This is really what you do here. So this is the key thing to actually doing what we call an indefinite integral. So anytime you have an indefinite integral, which means anytime you have an integral here without telling you where to start or where to stop, you just take your antiderivative and you add some constant term because taking the derivative of this thing just disappears. So that makes it also true. So that is really how we can work with these. And that's the whole idea behind an indefinite integral. So we find an antiderivative, in other words, a function whose derivative is this thing here, and we just add a constant to it. That's all there is to it. So what I'm going to show you then in the next video is just going to be a few tricks now. Now that we've sort of seen how to do this, we can actually work and find some tricks to finding these integrals here. In other words, finding these antiderivatives. And then we're just going to remember to always just throw an extra C at the end. So we're just going to add a C.